The Disappearance of Heidi Allen On Easter Sunday, April 3rd, 1994, 18-year-old Heidi Marie Allen was working alone as a cashier at the D&W Convenience Store in the town of Oswego County, near the town of New Haven, New York State. She opened the store at about 5.45 a.m. and managed the store routinely for approximately two hours, with nothing out of the ordinary happening. Heidi mysteriously went missing in the middle of her shift without a trace. Despite the fact that it has been decades since that fateful day, the missing case remains a mystery. Her sister Lisa stated that Heidi worked that Easter Sunday so a co-worker could be at home with her kids so they could find their Easter baskets. Heidi's last act of kindness and selflessness. When Heidi opened the store at 5.45 a.m., her boyfriend was with her and left as soon as people began to arrive and the place became busier. In an interview, Heidi's sister explained he would go take her so that she wasn't alone until the traffic was picking up and then he would go. The last transaction made on her register was at 7.42 a.m. for a pack of cigarettes. There was only three minutes between this transaction and when the next person came in. About 8 a.m., a marked Oswego County Sheriff's Department patrol unit was flagged down in the area by a citizen who had reported that the convenience store was open with lights and gas pumps on, but there was no one tending to the business. The cashier had apparently vanished from the store. Additional sheriff's units were called to the scene and an investigation commenced. The investigation revealed that Heidi was most likely taken against her will from the store. Her jacket, purse, and car keys were left behind in the store when she vanished. And her maroon station wagon was undisturbed in the parking lot. And there was money still in the register. Money was also found on the counter from customers who had came in to make purchases when there was no clerk in sight. Weeks of massive search by police, the New York State Army National Guard, and the U.S. Army 10th Mountain Division, and hundreds of volunteers, as well as a local and national media blitz, followed, with no positive results towards finding Heidi. Even though the search results were fruitless, the intensive police investigation led to the arrest of two local brothers in the case. Authorities believed the cause of her disappearance was foul play. The last known person to enter the store that morning before Heidi mysteriously vanished was a man named Richard Thibodeau. Richard later contacted the authorities when he had heard something had happened to Heidi. He felt he needed to contact them because he had been in the store that morning and saw Heidi. He informed authorities he had been in there and purchased two packs of cigarettes. Little did he know that his cooperation would change his life forever. A witness called 911 and reported seeing a strange light blue van at the gas station at the time of her disappearance. It was then discovered that Richard owned a white van that sort of fit the description. That was enough for the Oswego Police Department. Surveillance footage revealed that Richard and his brother Gary were the two men believed to be at the gas station that morning. A witness stated that they saw two men and a woman near a van and that one of the men had the woman in a bear hug. Gary Thibodeau had an alibi that morning and his wife had backed him up. He stated that he and his wife were at home in bed that Easter morning. Richard Thibodeau was charged with Allen's kidnapping in May, 1994, one month after Heidi was last seen. Richard's brother, Gary Thibodeau, was arrested on the same charge three months later. Separate jury trials were held for the pair in June of 1995, Gary was convicted of the same thing he was arrested for, kidnapping in the first degree. He was sentenced to 25 years to life in the New York State Correctional System. Richard was found not guilty in September 1995 and made it his mission to now clear his brother as well because he too was not guilty. When Gary heard his verdict in the courtroom, his mouth dropped in disbelief. Gary attempted to appeal his conviction, but was denied in 1999. He was expected to remain incarcerated until 2020. Federal prosecutor Lisa Peebles began looking deeper into the conviction of Gary Thibodeau. She believed that a major miscarriage of justice had occurred. Peebles then uncovered a bombshell regarding Heidi. 
It was revealed that Heidi Allen had been working as a teen drug informant since she was 15 years old. She went by the alias Julia Roberts. The deputy she was working with had dropped an identification card two years prior to the incident in the parking lot of the convenience store where she worked. The identification card included her name, social security number, address, and code name, along with other personal information, thus giving away her status as a drug informant. Peebles also found another vital piece of information in this case that seemed to have been brushed under the rug. Tanya Priest came forward with a story that she had been trying to tell police for years and stated they wouldn't take her seriously. Tanya said in the early 2000s, she was at the home of James Steen and his wife, Vicki. Tanya and Vicki were watching TV one day and something about Heidi's disappearance came on. They were asking one another whether they thought the Thibodeau brothers were innocent or guilty of the crime. According to Tanya, Vicki's husband chimed in and asked them if they really wanted to know what happened to Heidi Allen. He proceeded to almost brag and then tell them a story. He said that Heidi had threatened some local drug dealers with going to the police if they didn't stop harassing her boyfriend. James stated that on that Easter morning, he, Roger Breckenridge, and Michael Bohr took Bohr's white van to abduct Heidi. He said when the three of them got to the convenience store, he went in through the side door and Roger Breckenridge went in the front. Breckenridge's job was to distract Heidi while James snuck up on her and grabbed her from behind the counter. Then the two men took Heidi out to the van where Steen said he had her in a bear hug and slammed her into the van. It's very interesting to me that the witness earlier described a man as having a woman in a bear hug and Steen's story portrayed the same. He stated that Michael Bohr had stayed in the driver's seat while he and Breckenridge forced Heidi into the van. Steen said that they drove Heidi to Breckenridge's girlfriend's house, where the three men took turns beating her in the garage until she passed away. Tanya Priest wasn't the only person to come forward with this information. Several other witnesses stated they had heard Steen bragging about the crime as well. Steen and his wife Vicki separated soon after he spilled this story to them. And eventually, Steen would go on to take the life of Vicki and her new partner. Gary's defense team didn't have this important piece of information, which may or may not have changed the case. Even though Gary's lawyer took his case all the way to the state's highest court, he never got a new trial and ended up dying in prison. It's almost as if the Oswego Police Department were more so trying to prove that Gary Thibodeau did the crime rather than trying to find Heidi and her captors. Peebles stated, it was like they were pit bulls who had sunk their teeth into them and weren't going to let go. Gary Thibodeau maintained his innocence until the day he died in prison in 2018. Were the authorities trying to make it out that Thibodeau was guilty to cover up the fact that they failed Heidi by leaking that she was a drug informant? Did the wrong person find out about that lost informant card? Was Heidi beaten to death? Unless Heidi is found or the authorities look into the other leads that have been presented, we may never know the truth about what really happened to her. At the time of her disappearance, Heidi was described as a white female, five foot 11 inches tall and 145 pounds, light brown, blonde hair, worn long and curly, and blue eyes. She would have been 48 years old this year. Anyone who has any information on the case is asked to contact the Oswego County Sheriff's Office at one of the following numbers, 1-800-724-8477 or 315-349-3411. Heidi had an infectious smile. That's the one thing that people will say they remember about her, is that smile. She was always smiling, and she always put others ahead of herself. My heart truly goes out to Heidi's family, and I hope that one day that they get the answers that they are seeking. Thanks so much for watching my video. If you're new here, be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell. Here's last week's video if you missed it, and here's a playlist of all my videos.